Another useful tool when it comes to web applications is a tool called Burp Suite. Now, let's go ahead and open up Burp Suite. So we're gonna go up to the applications and in your favorite should exist Burp Suite here. Now, Burp Suite is what we call a web proxy. Now, a web proxy means that it has the capability of intercepting traffic for us, and we're gonna see what that looks like. So you're probably gonna get this error about this JRE. Don't worry about it. We're just gonna say okay. You might get a, you need to accept this license agreement when you first start. Go ahead and accept that as well. And if you see an update screen, go ahead and just close. So we are on the community edition, so we will have limited features. We'll talk more about those when we get to the web application section, but I just want to introduce you to what Burp Suite can do in a very basic form and how we can actually gather some information out of a website from Burp Suite pretty easily. So let's go ahead and just select temporary project and click next and then select start Burp. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up our Firefox for utilizing Burp Suite. So go ahead and go to Favorites in Firefox. And I want you to go over to the right hand little hamburger here. And you're going to go and select Preferences. From Preferences, we're going to scroll down all the way to the bottom and we're going to select Settings. Now we're going to select this manual proxy configuration here and we're going to say 127.0.0.1 on port 8080. Later when we get to the web application section, I'll show you a much easier way of doing this with a tool called Foxy Proxy. But for right now, this is a very high level overview. So go ahead and use this proxy server for all protocols. And that should fill in the rest down here. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And we're going to leave this open. I'll show you why in a second. So I also want you to go to a new tab and I want you to go to HTTPS double dot slash slash burp like this. Now your first page might not show up like this. It might show up with a you need to accept this certificate. You're just going to say allow down at the bottom and say yes permanently store this exception and then you'll be brought to a screen somewhat like this. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and just click on CA certificate here and then save the file. Mine is already saved as you can see in my downloads right here. So what I'm going to do is we're gonna go back into preferences once we have that saved and we're gonna to go to privacy and security over on the left hand side. We're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom and there is a view certificates button down here. And then we're going to go ahead and just hit import. Your downloads folder should automatically be selected. If not, select downloads and then just select the CA cert.der, hit open. And then it's already installed for me, but you will have two check boxes. Check both of those boxes and select OK. And then it should now be imported for you. So a couple things to note, Firefox sometimes changes things around. I am recording this video in 2019. If you watch it at a later time, just be cognizant that in the general tab, usually towards the bottom is the network settings and the privacy and security settings usually contain the certificates. So look around for those, sometimes these move. So from here, let's go ahead and just see what we set up. So I want you to go ahead and try to go to a website. We can try to say tesla.com and it is going to stall out. What is going on here? So if we go over here, we see this proxy tab is lit up in orange. We're going to go ahead and click on that. And you can see that it's gathering some data here. It's captured some stuff from Firefox. Uh, we've got more Firefox. We can just click forward through this if we want. And now we can see Tesla starting to load. And we're, what we're doing is we're intercepting requests that Tesla is making out. This to me looks like a API request or a GeoIP request. So this might be geolocation looking for a city. So we're just clicking through, clicking through. All we're doing is capturing all different kinds of traffic and we can modify this traffic. Say we have this request here. You don't have to know what this is right now, but we have got this get request. We can make this a post request and forward that and see what happens. I'm just going to turn the intercept off. I'm going to show you what's going on here. So we can go over to the target. 
and you can see all the pages that have loaded in here. This is all the traffic that has been intercepted so far since we ran Tesla. So not only is Tesla running, but you can see that it pulls Google Analytics. It pulls this secured visit, which looks like tracking as well. It pulls double click, which looks like maybe ads. And then it has an API running here as well. So it's gathering all this traffic through, but we're gonna dig into just Tesla here. And I just wanna click on the first forward slash and see if there's a response to our request. There isn't, let's go ahead and just look at maybe the, let's see if we click into one of these, if we get a good response, we don't. Let's refresh one more time on the page and you might even need to hit enter. Okay, and sometimes it doesn't come through right away. So let's go ahead and just click around. There we go, do you see all the stuff coming through now? That's more like it. It wasn't picking everything up right away. So what we can do is we can look at some of the things that just came through. Like we just went to the Model 3 page. So let's go ahead and click on this Model 3 and see what it's got for us. So you can see that if we look at the request for this Git Model 3, we made a Git request to Model 3. And what's happened is we say, hey, I want to go out to this page. Go ahead and take me there. And then we can view the response as well. Now in the response, we can get so much information. Look at this. We're seeing here that PHP 7.3.7 is running on the back end. We can see a bunch of information here as well, like Drupal 8 is running. We identified that earlier, but we're identifying it again. We could see a lot of other stuff. There's weird things here going on too, like there's a server name sitting in here. Typically on an assessment, this would actually be a finding, a low finding, but it's informational as this is giving us information on possibly naming structure inside the network, but they also have their own Tesla type header here. So this is very unique for a client. But what the point of the matter is here is that we can intercept a basic request and response and get a lot of information through Burp Suite. We're gonna hit home on this really hard when it comes into the scanning and enumeration section and when we get into the web section as well. But for now, I just want you to take away that we've installed Burp Suite and we can go out to a website and I still define this as not active scanning. There is a feature in Burp Suite that has active scanning that we could actually run, but that is a Burp Suite Pro. So it has a vulnerability scanner built in. You can see, see up here, upgrade to Burp Suite Professional, automatically find vulnerabilities. I have Burp Suite Pro, it's $400 a year. It is absolutely fantastic, worth the money one of the few applications that I would recommend anybody buy. But for the course, I'm going to limit it to utilizing Community Edition. I will bring in Pro sometimes just to show you some features, but we're not going to worry about that. So long spiel short, I still feel that we are in step one here, even though we are accessing the website. We're not doing anything very actively with scanning. This is all very passive. We're using traffic like a normal user would. So you can see that we can intercept traffic and get a lot of information. Again, tools like Wappalizer, look, it pulls down the headers for us and it says, hey, it's running PHP 7.3.7. .7. It's running Drupal 8. Where is it getting that from? Well, it's getting it from these responses. So it's pulling a lot of that down for us automatically, but there's a lot of things that we can do when we get into Burp Suite as well. So consider this just a mini introduction into the tool and then we'll touch back on it over and over again as we go. So this is it for this video. We're gonna get into some Google Foo in the next video and talk about social media as well. So I'll see you in the next one.